How's it going you guys? So in this video I want to kind of update you all on my whole grain experiment and uh, my nutrition, uh, kind of like the, the type of diet uh, that I'm personally following right now. And I suppose like an update on my nutrition philosophy maybe. Um, so uh, as many of you have probably seen uh, about two weeks ago, I had started eating whole grains again. Um, I had added uh, oatmeal into my diet and I also added brown rice into my diet. And uh, the reason why this is, is this is really like groundbreaking is because I actually used to deal with psoriasis and irritable bowel syndrome and all sorts of autoimmune symptoms whenever I would eat whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. Um, and I just break out in psoriasis all over my body and I have um, like digestive problems and all sorts of things. But um, when I started this experiment about two, two weeks ago, um, I noticed, oh, and I used to have horrible gas and all sorts of things and bloating and my whole stomach, my stomach would just like expand all abnormally. Well, I actually, have not experienced these symptoms at all the last couple weeks. Um, what I actually notice is I'm able to eat um, brown rice and uh, oatmeal without experiencing the severe the severe negative symptoms I used to. Now, one thing I'll say is um, oatmeal, as long as I soak and as I soak it overnight and I add some. Uh, apple cider vinegar to it, I don't really notice any undigested food in my stool the next day, and I definitely don't get any gas or bloating, which is crazy. Very, very crazy. Um, because I used to get be a gassy, bloated mess when I would eat oatmeal, but especially not when I soak and sprout it. I also tried eating the oatmeal without soaking, soaking it or whatever. And it didn't really seem to cause me too many problems, but I think I did see some undigested the next day. Now, in regards to brown rice, brown rice, um, I actually noticed I did see some undigested brown rice in my stool the next day. But the amount of undigested brown rice was nowhere near as bad as it used to be when I was getting autoimmune symptoms and things from it. Uh, however, I would say overall um, that I seem to have cured, I seem to have like wiped out a gut infection I probably had. So back in 2011 slash 2012, um, I had a bout of staph infection from a tattoo, from my tattoos that I got around that time. And the and my and it was bad. It was actually a MRSA infection, and it got huge, like golf ball size in my arm. Doctors were scared that I was gonna have to have my my arm amputated. So it was antibiotic resistant MRSA, and they had given me a ton of internal antibiotics. And my doctor did his own. He had a, he was doing his own surgery on me, basically draining the draining the infection and adding uh, topical antibiotic to it as well and I was able to get that under control. And I had two of them. I had one in the beginning of 2011 and one towards the end of 2011. And it was, and so I went through a bunch of antibiotics on that. And then um, it was a couple months after that actually uh, that I started experiencing symptoms. And I started eating more healthier like later on in 2012 when I started my fitness journey and stuff like that. I started doing martial arts more more seriously at the time, started karate and shellin kung fu and everything. I was eating healthier but I was noticing a lot of bloating and gas and like just problems and couldn't breathe, breath, breathlessness and stuff. And then in early 2013 I was put on another type of antibiotic for something else that I had and it was after that that I think I experienced the worst symptoms. So. Uh, so that was in early 2013. Fast forward to 2015, after a year of being vegan, I found that it was the whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds 
that would trigger my symptoms, my digestive illness and my digestive symptoms and things. Um, and the psoriasis and all of that was related to the undigested food I was seeing in the stool. So I actually, so it was me noticing the plant foods in, 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 the, in, the, in the toilet. And that included everything from tomatoes, potatoes, carrots, um, you know, and, um, you know, obviously beans, nuts and seeds when I'd eat them. I was literally like a salad shooter. It was terrible. And yeah, I don't even want to go into too much more detail. But then when I went autoimmune paleo around like July, like it was like June, July of 2015, that was when I experienced the best health of my life. I got a six pack for the first time in my life about two months later. Uh, my sleep started to come back to me. I had more energy all of a sudden. I was no longer bloated. I had a six pack all of a sudden, which was crazy. First time in my life. Um, my skin literally within, within like four days, my skin improved, my skin just completely cleared up. No more psoriasis. My digestion regulated. There was no more like pooping out undigested food, no more diarrhea, bloating, gas, none of that. Autoimmune, autoimmune paleo completely resolved my symptoms. However, again, that was in 2015. Ever since then, I had I would eat you know whole grains every now and then to try to see what would happen. Same thing. Um, I would bloat up. I'd have a bout of insomnia, and then the next morning, or sometimes within hours after eating, I would just poop it all out undigested. Um, so if you fast forward now uh, to 2018, around November of 2018. Uh, I started my carnivore experiment where from, it was actually December, uh, December 8th of 2018 all the way until like early 2020. I was almost exclusively carnivore. I had tried like a carbohydrate experiment or a plant experiment a couple times during that year, but I was almost exclusively carnivore. I barely ever ate any carbs. I competed in Muay Thai on a freaking exclusive meat, exclusively red meat diet. And so during, and during that time I did consume a lot of coconut oil though, and MCT oil, I did. Um, coconut oil is a very potent antifungal, antibacterial. Um, and so it's known to help to clear out infections like SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and gut dysbiosis and candida overgrowth and things like that. Um, I, in fact, there, I had a lot of functional medicine doctors that would tell me I needed to cut the carbs out and eat a shit ton of coconut oil and do some kind of cleanse or whatever. I never listened to these people though because I always thought carbs were necessary and whatnot. It wasn't until I just stopped caring completely about the, the gut thing and I just did carnivore because I saw all these people that were getting ripped and becoming superhuman with all these amazing benefits. That was when I went carnivore and that was why I went carnivore. I had nothing to do with clearing up my gut or anything. It just so happened that, uh, you know, my digestion was better than ever at the same time. So, was completely damn near zero carb almost all the time. Uh, hardly ate any plant foods, lots of coconut oil and stuff like that. Um, from 2018, you know, December 2018, all the way until, you know, 2020 was when I started to experiment a lot more with carbohydrates and things. And then just recently, you know, or, you know, throughout earlier this year, I was just hammering it with tablespoons of coconut oil. I was doing pretty damn low carb. And, you know, what I think happened, because now I'm able to eat these grains all of a sudden. Uh, and by the way, I'm not keeping them in my diet for too long. But what I think happened is that the antibiotics probably killed off the good bacteria in my intestine, in my large intestine that's responsible for digesting the, the plant foods and the, and the beans and the nuts and seeds and stuff. And so without those bacteria, um, I think also, I was eating a very high sugar diet around the time I was on these antibiotics. I was eating nothing but pasta, lots of cheese. I was eating, uh, drinking Monster all the time, like four pack, a four pack of Monster a day, 
candy bars, snack cakes, you name it. I was a horrible junk food eater. And I'm lucky I didn't die of diabetes at that time. Uh, I did actually have fatty liver though at a certain point during that time. So I was on the verge, I probably did have insulin resistance even though I was leaner. I was, I was lean though, I wasn't fat, but uh, lots and lots of sugar and refined, refined grains at that time. So I probably created uh, either candida overgrowth or SIBO. Something I forgot to mention though is I also developed a yellow, like a yellow tongue after a certain time. And that's a prime indication of a, of a gut infection. Usually uh, candida, but it could be SIBO as well. So I did have severe symptoms of like uh, SIBO or candida or something. And I managed all of those symptoms by removing grains, beans, nuts, and seeds, and dairy to a certain extent. Um, but I was never able to eat those foods. So, and whenever I had them back in, I, it, I had those problems. So what I think it was, was SIBO or candida overgrowth, some kind of gut infection, those foods were probably growing in the wrong part of my intestine. And it was the antibiotics that, that originally killed off the bacteria. All that sugar started causing bad bugs to grow. Um, in place of the good bugs that were killed off from the antibiotics. So the sugar was causing the bad shit to grow. And over time, it got to a point where all of the grains, the whole grains and the fiber and the plant foods I was eating seemed to be uh, feeding the pathogenic bacteria. And so I'd have nothing but farting and like, just like, it was horrible. Um, but when I went carnivore in 2000, uh, December 2018, what probably happened was I wasn't feeding those bacteria at all. There was no fermentable fiber, like vegetables. There's no whole grains. There's no refined carbs anymore. There's no sugar. There was no honey. There was no any any kind of possible fuel for those those pathogenic bacteria were completely gone on carnivore. And so I was no longer just treating my symptoms at that point. What I was doing was starving the bad bacteria. And on top of that, I was eating a shit ton of MCT oil and coconut oil, like whole coconut oil from lauric acid. So a lot of people don't realize, so in coconut oil, we have lots of uh, immune boosting and uh, antibiotic pro uh, compounds and antifungal compounds. We have monolaurin and we have lauric acid, okay? And those two things in coconut oil directly destroy, they, they're severely um, uh, medicinal in healing gut infections. So I think the combination of the, of the carnivore diet combined with all the coconut oil destroyed the pathogenic bacteria in my gut. And then eventually, um, you know, I probably healed that, the, the gut dysbiosis and, you know, whatever um, my gut lining, if it was damaged, probably healed too. And now, uh, whenever I eat oatmeal or something like that, I don't get those pathogenic symptoms. Uh, other than, you know, I might get a little bit of gas, but I haven't noticed any. And I might uh, see a little bit of undigested grain in my stool the next day, but nothing severe like it used to be. There's no like full body rash that would break out. And it used to have a lot of itchiness. You know, there's no, there's not a whole lot of undigested food the next day. There's no gas or bloating. And so the conclusion is, the, I had a gut infection that was caused by antibiotics and a high sugar diet, but removing all the sugar, removing all the grains, going carnivore, combined with lots of coconut oil, probably destroyed the bad bacteria. And now I, now I can eat grains if I want to. Uh, but at the same time, I definitely don't, I don't know if I would say it's optimal to include grains in your diet, even if you're like a hardcore athlete. So at this point in time, I'm not like, actually I haven't really even had any oatmeal or brown rice in a couple of days. Um, I don't think that like grains are necessary or, you know, I don't really know how much benefit they have unless you're an athlete. If I do eat oatmeal or grains in the future, 
it's going to be mostly to fuel my training because I, I usually train at least two times a day. I'll usually do strength and conditioning for one session and then I'll do jujitsu for a second session. And sometimes I'll do two jujitsu sessions a day. That's a whole lot of training when you're like grappling with other people and uh, you know sparring on a regular basis and whatnot. So being an athlete, a little bit of carbs up to about 150 a day, I can stay in ketosis and all of those carbs will just help to um, help with the, bur the glycogen burden that is being placed in my body. The glycogen demand from the vigorous activity can be fueled by the whole grain intake. Um, but I think fruits and probably some raw local honey and maybe some tubers are probably a much better option than things like, you know, rice and whatnot. But, and I definitely don't think white rice or refined rice is a health food. There's a lot of people who ask me, uh, what do I think between white rice and brown rice? I think white rice uh, is not good. It has the potential to create uh, vitamin B1 deficiency. You know, in fact, the only reason why we even discovered vi uh, vitamin deficiencies in the first place is because populations of people were eating, um, they switched from brown rice to white rice. If we never re started refining grains, we probably never would have ran into nutrient deficiencies. Um, although I'm probably wrong on that. There's a lot of people who follow these brown rice diets or potato diets. So, uh, I just, I just think that there's a lot more potential for harm if you eat refined grains. So if you, if you can eat brown rice, then do it because there's no reason to eat white rice or refined grains unless you were like me where you had a gut infection, but you wanted to sustain athletic activity at the same time. But even then you can subside on, you know, find a, a better source of carb, a whole food carb source that agrees with your gut and eat mostly a ketogenic diet and just target your carb intake around activity. So for those of you who are wondering if I'm gonna like start eating grains again as a regular, regular part of my diet, um, you know, I'm not really like intending to eat more grains. As far as my overall carb intake, it's gonna stay around 20 to 150 grams per day. Um, and I'm gonna maintain ketosis and just only eat carbs around my activity basically, which is what I've been doing this, this entire year so far. Actually, I've been mostly in ketosis this year. I've been, I, I should be doing more carbs, but I just haven't. So, um, not really planning on being a, you know, eating much carbs or eating much grains. But if I do eat whole grains, it's, it's going to be fueling activity. It's not going to be more than like 100 grams worth of carbs, 150 grams more. Most of the week, I'm eating under 50 grams per day. Um, and lately, it's been zero carb. I've just been eating meat, coconut oil, organs, eggs. So anyway, um, but I think potatoes, sweet potatoes and stuff like that is a way better source of carbs. So I'm going to make a spe another video specifically about... Uh, my nutrition and uh, what I'm doing right now and my main goals and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so leave your question and comments down below. Let me know what you think. Um, and if you have any questions you want me to answer in a video, let me know and I'll talk to you all next time.